There are various types of gangs operating in Ireland at the moment in all our major cities. They are punks, mods, rockers, teds, greasers, futuristics, <laughs> new romantics, blitz kids, skinheads, rudy skinheads, boot boys, hell's angels, bikers and scab boys. And we have some representatives of various gangs on the programme tonight, starting with, closest to me, a gentleman called Donica McDonough, who is 20 years of age. He's unemployed. He's been a punk for six years. He is from Crumlin, and he is one of 11 children. Beside him, we have Siobhan Corrigan, who's 19. She's been a punk for four years, and she's a sales assistant. She's from Drimna, the eldest of four children. Next, we have John Fiddler, who is 20. And he's a first-year student of fashion and textiles at the National College of Art and Design. He's from Kalini, the eldest of two children. It says here he's been dressing strangely for five years. <laughs> Gerard Quinn finally is 20. He is a mod. He's been a mod for three years. He's unemployed. He's from Fatima Mansions, and there are 16 children in his family. Let us talk to them a while about the sort of things that many people would, stra would think strange and what they do. For example, Donica. Uh, the philosophy of being punk, what is it, what's it about, Donica? It's a rebellion against the old system, system that we are born into and we're supposed to live by, but we don't agree with the today's system, so we rebel against it in our appearance, the way we dress and the way we think. Mainly. Are you into violence, Donica, at all? Well, it's centred around us because a lot of straight people have a violent attitude towards us and everyone seems to think it's us that are dividing people, but we're not quite the opposite. And how do, do the other members of your family, there were 11 in, children in the family altogether, how do they react and how did they react when you started dressing the way you are? Well, they reacted strangely at the start, but after a matter of years, they just kind of get used to you, so just don't think about you, you know? And you're unemployed, I know. What do you do yeah. all day with yourself? Not much. <laughs> not much. Well, I mean, do you go into town every day and walk no. around? Or? Basically, just stay at home, sit around. Yes, and do you go out at night? No, there's nowhere to go. And nowhere they let you in. How do you mean there's nowhere they let you in? No pubs or clubs, discotheques, nothing. They even don't let you into some restaurants. They just won't let you in? Just basically won't. They think well, you're trouble. And well, is there anywhere in Dublin that you are allowed in? There's one pub. That's basically it. It's on... One pub? Yeah. And you all presumably foregather there then, do you? Well, a few of us, we keep it numbers down so there's no trouble. Yes. Well, the, why do it then, Donica, if life is made so difficult for you? A you challenge. Know, a challenge? Challenge against whom? Against everyone around us apart from ourselves. Like um, anyone that tries to dictate us. We but rebel against our dictation. But they are dictating to you if they don't let you into their premises with, like, other people to have a drink or a disco or whatever. It's true, yeah. But, um... Are you into drugs? No. Not at all? Do, are, are punks generally into drugs? Not really, no. It's possibly I'll try it once or twice. Not yes. Really Do you have trouble with the police? Um, sometimes, yeah. Like, what sort of trouble? trouble well... We've nowhere to go, so we generally end up standing around places like Stevens Green, and they find us a threat, or the public find us a threat, where we just stand, think we're going to harass them or something. Mm. So the police generally come along, move you along, and then sometimes it gets complicated. Yeah. Calls them there. But you, you, you reckon that you don't ask for trouble? No, we don't. Now, you've been a punk for six years. How, how long more do you think you can go on being a punk? Till death. Till death? Uh, and what do you live on in terms of money? The dough. <laughs> mm -hmm. You live on the dough. The famous and, and, dough. And how much money would you spend on clothes, for example, every year? About ten pound, if even that. Yeah. And and do do your family? I mean, what 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 about your mother, um, up in Crumlin? Now, what 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 do you feel about her? Not much really. Um, just that she's my mother, and yeah, like you have your love for your mother, and that's it. The yeah, well, way you look like doesn't change that. Like, you know. Yes, and do you have love for your mother? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, and, and, and are you good to her? Well, to my best ability, yeah. Yes. I mean, do you give her money every week or anything? Ah, yeah, yeah. You do? Yeah. Out of the dole? So how much would you say you're living on per week? Yourself now, how much money would oh, you £8. Pound. £8. Quid. If even that's some weeks. Yes, a week. 
All right, now Siobhan Corrigan, good day to you. And um, what about your parents' attitudes? How do they react? Well, um, like in the beginning, like with shock, oh no, you know. And then, uh, like, they thought it was like a, f a phase I'd grow out of. So, you say, give her this three months or four months, you know. Yeah. But, like, I've seen it's gone on so long. Like, they realised that uh, I don't get into trouble or anything like that. And uh, I'm not, hopefully, not offending anybody by the way I dress. I'm doing what I enjoy. And, uh, like, uh, they've become used to me in a way, like, you know. Yes, you're the eldest of four. I am, yeah. and, and what's the reaction of your brothers and sisters to you? Uh, like, it all depends. <laughs> like, in what kind of um, situation you're in. Because, uh, like, if, if naturally you're being nice to them, saying, here's your money or here's some sweets or something, mm. they're going to be, oh, great, yeah, yeah, great, you know. Mm. But, it, like, uh, if you're um, arguing or anything with them, it's the total opposite, like, stay you and all this, you know, so. And why do you dress the way you do? Why do you...? Well, I like the dress, for a start. And then you're, you're, you're being different, like, you're not just falling in with the usual crowd, like, mm. you know. And uh, then I, I feel quite comfortable in the way I dress, you know. Yes. And what about... Were, were you... If you were, a, if you were a punk for four years and you're 19, you must have been... You must have started in school. Yeah. Well, what school were you in? Loretta College. And, and you started this... Lark. In school, yeah. yes. And and what was their reaction? Like uh, the well, today I got a streak in my hair with some blue in it. I was called down to the head office, and the sister asked me had I got an operation on the side of my head. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like we weren't allowed to wear nail varnish. They're still not. Yeah. But like I was uh, wearing this bright green nail varnish from the weekend, and I was trying to hide it. Yeah. And I kind of went, oh. <laughs> I suppose that's so much our uniform, you know, because yeah. I was a green uniform, you know, so. And were you suspended? Well, uh, no, I wasn't. I didn't get into much trouble over that. Yeah, and they, they got used to you too, did they? They did, yeah. They got Eventually. made to live with. Yes, yes. So you never had any major disagreement with them. John Fiddler, first year student of fashion and textiles, National College of Art and Design from Kalini. Two children in your family. Um, what, 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 what do you consider yourself to be, John? Um, well, I wouldn't call myself anything. Um, I wouldn't put myself in any category at all. I'm just quite a normal person, really. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, under the various categories that we have of punks, mods, rockers, teds, greasers, futuristics, new romantics, what, what would you be more inclined towards? Well, I wouldn't be inclined to any of them, but um, just the last five years, whatever's gone along the last five years, that's what's influenced me, like music-wise or style-wise, so... Yes. That's what I am. Now, you're, you're obviously wearing eye makeup and eye shadow and so yeah, on. Yeah, a little bit. And, and what is that in your nose? It's a uh, stud. A stud, yeah. yeah. Yes. Wh why particularly do you wear makeup? Well, under these bright lights, you know, you'd show up all the spots and pimples if you didn't wear it. But, but do, you wear, do you wear the makeup during the day? Well, it depends. I mean, it's, when you get up in the morning, it depends whether you want to put it on. Yeah. A bit of foundation will do you the world of good. <laughs> well, I mean, if you've ever gone into Dublin during the day, you come out and your just, face is just filthy. It's all yes. black bits over it and everything, you know. But you can just wipe it all off if you've got makeup on and your skin's as fresh as a daisy. That's yeah, what, what about your parents' reaction to you in, in, in Kalani, John? What was... <laughs> I don't know what in kalani has got to do with it. But, yes, um, they, they, well, they thought it was a phase I was going through. And so did I. But it's <laughs> something happened, so it's not a face. <laughs> but I'm still growing, so I'm only young. So, well, I mean, do you live at home? I do, yeah. Yes, and and and, and what do your I mean, do your parents ever discuss this? Situation? Do you think they're upset about it, or do they? No, find they it know odd? what I'm like. I mean, my hair is well. I mean, that's just my hair, you know. They know what kind of a person I am. Yes. That's what matters. And, so. and do you think they worry about uh, neighbours and other Oh, yeah, they do, yeah. of course. Do they? But, I mean, that's the neighbours' fault for sort of making them worry in the first place. Yes. Do you have to work, do you have to work hard to get your hair like that, John? Or, or? Well, it depends what kind of a hurry I'm in. Mean. Like, I've had time to do it for tonight. Of course, I've done it especially for you. No, I, wouldn't wear <laughs> I wouldn't wear this to breakfast. It would take too long to make. Like you wouldn't wear it to breakfast, it, you know? yes. No, yeah. no, I wouldn't. Well, th thank you for making the effort for the late, late show. I thought I'd give you something that would be exciting. Yes, exci count. indeed, indeed. Well, <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks.
Now, Jared Quinn, you're 20, a mod for three years, and, and you're unemployed, and I know you like the mods. Do all mods ride Vespas? Well, if you have the money, you ride a Vespa, gay. Okay. Yeah. How much is a Vespa running at now in cash? Well, they're all different prices. Well, say like 1,400. 1,400 pounds. And then how much are you stung for insurance on that? 400 pounds. Yeah. What, what, what is the thing about Vespas? And, uh, I mean, specifically Vespas. There are other scooters on the market, but you all ride Vespas. Why that? Because you can't get a Lambretta in this country. Oh. <laughs> See, that's, that's lateral thinking. I never thought of that. I, I thought there was somebody still bringing in the old Lambrettas. That's, that's it. Well, now, you, you are remarkably clean cut in your hair and, and style and so on compared with the others. Explain yeah. that to me. That's all about being a mod. It's well dressed. It's a style. Like in the 60s, you know, like mod came out around 64, 63. Hmm. And ever since then, you know, like it's always been the same. Nothing has really changed about it. It's only that up to day now, 1980s, the clothes are getting more stylish. But we basically, you know, dress on the 60s. We go by music by the 60s. Things like that. And the scooters. Yeah. Go for runs. Yes. Like in the 60s, mods go away on the weekend. Like over in England, they in the 60s to go to Brighton, Scarborough, and all like this. Yeah. But over here, we, we can't do that. So we either go to Tramore, down the country, like Galway, Limerick, Carlo, Cork, tour around on the scooters. In, in, in a bunch? About, yes. About how many of you in a, in a bunch? About 70 or 80 scooters. He made it up from different counties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dr. De Bono, uh, uh, what is... <laughs> I think um, if you take it uh, levels, I mean, everyone wears something they want to wear. I mean, you wear the colour of tie you want to wear, I wear the suit you want to wear. I don't see that this is that different. I think it's someone who wants to express themselves in what they wear. The interesting thing, I think, is that in wanting to show that you're different, to externalize your feeling of being alienated, wanting to be different. I think the interesting point is whether, uh, if we take three things, there's the conformist, often because he's too lazy to be anything else. I mean, as we've seen, being different mm -hmm. requires quite a lot of effort. Then there's the eccentric, who really is an eccentric, who really is, uh, just doesn't care about anything. But I think here it's really belonging to another group. It's opting out of the major group, but really in a sense belonging to another group. And that's the interesting point, whether, whether a rebellion is a personal thing or whether a rebellion is belonging to a group, which is a rebel group. Yes. In other words, whether one needs the friends around you in order to support that.